Hello, Red Wave. Welcome to Boyer Bulldogs Podcast. We are your hosts, Caleb Dale and Caleb Pletz, bringing you Fresno State football three times a week. You can follow us on the X at beware underscore Bulldogs on Instagram, beware Bulldogs podcast and on Twitter, beware of Bulldogs. You can follow me on X, Caleb underscore go dogs and Mr. Pletz on X CMP go dogs. If you're watching on Twitter or on YouTube right now, Caleb, I don't know what it's like on your screen, but you're frozen on my screen. Hope you know, group of five Wi-Fi. So hopefully <laughs> you get a nice picture of Caleb coming through. <laughs> Today, we preview the Eastern Washington game that's on Saturday. Remember, wear white. We're, we're in the works with getting someone to talk about Eastern Washington with, for our Get to Know episode. So we will get to know them uh, later. Last week, it was reversed. We got to know Purdue first, and then we had our preview, which we'd like to do, but we weren't sure how it was going to work out with Eastern Washington. So we're recording this first, and then we'll see if we got the Get to know we'll, we'll see how it works out thank you for tuning in once again if you're on youtube leave a like share it my goal for everyone when you're done maybe it's right now tell one person ask them have you heard of beware of bulldogs if not can you really consider yourself a fresno state fan that, that's what i would tell them <laughs> caleb how was uh, your one day well it was labor it's labor day how was your labor day Labor was nice. Um, didn't do any laboring today, which uh, I appreciated. So I uh, just kind of laid low and took it easy, which uh, was nice because the fall and football season is only going to get busier. So, um, yeah, it was kind of good. Uh, you'll end the summer uh, relaxation. Good. Good for you. man. All right. Today we have everybody dance now. Uh, going to make you sweat. We have some I, ha I have my outline in front of me somewhere but we have what we know about eastern washington up to this point our keys to the game and then caleb's going to walk us through the weather the wh where we can watch it on tv and then we will get to our score predictions before we get to what we know about eastern washington I need to tell you about the vine church in fresno the vine church in fresno located on shaw west of Rantland. Come join us. I'm there. My wife and I are there. Uh, we, you drive by it if you're heading out west or if you're heading east from Kerman. I drive, drove by it all the time. I've been attending there for a while. And this Sunday is potluck, fried chicken. So let me know if you're coming. I'm going to be there after church. Service starts at 10 a.m. Uh, the church is biblically sound. Pastor speaks biblical truth. Everyone's very kind, very welcoming. I'll see you there Sunday, 10 a.m., and then after, potluck, fried chicken potluck. Sounds so, good. It's big, al big almost big like big. almost like, like a post-game tailgate for church. It is. It, it is. The, and I know we're going to be coming off a win, so it's going to be even better. Maybe I shouldn't jump the gun there. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Let's talk, Caleb, what we know about Eastern Washington their record right now, they are 0-1. Eastern Washington lost their week one matchup against North Dakota State. And you and I both know, we all know North Dakota State, one of the best teams in the FCS for the past, I don't know, Long my time. lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They lost 35-10. to And some numbers for you guys, if you haven't kept up with, with Eastern Washington, which, by the way, we'll, we'll get to the connections there. There's a lot of storylines that we could go down. North Dakota State ran for 337 yards on Eastern Washington on 39 attempts. They averaged eight and a half yards a carry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know our game plan. <laughs> or at least uh, a goal of something to attack. <laughs> yes. Uh, Eastern Washington only ran the ball for 72 yards. They ran it for two and a half yards of carry. Uh, passing the ball, Eastern Washington, we know they like to throw the ball. Um, can came from there, our OC. Running back coach Pryor came from there. Passing the ball, they threw for 267 yards. On 39 attempts, their quarterback went 23 of 39 with one interception, averaged 
seven yards at completion through one touchdown. They do have a good wide receiver. His name is Efton, I believe. I'm not making yeah, that up. Last, last, last name Chisholm. Yeah, Efton Chisholm. He led the team in receptions, eight receptions, 79 yards, didn't score a touchdown, but he made a couple good plays. The player leading the team in rushing uh, that is not quarterback is Michael Wortham. He ran. He only ran the ball five times. They're, the person leading the way when it comes to rushing attempts is their quarterback. His name's Kakoa Visperis. He had 13 carries for 11 yards. Hey, he didn't lead the team. Third leading rusher on the team. But he is the lead. He's the leader when it comes to attempted rushes. So once again, here we go. We're gonna have to stop a mobile quarterback, which I, I don't think is as a problem for us anymore. I think we nipped that in bud against San Jose State last year. They do have some threats. This is not a team we can look over. Caleb, go. I've talked too long. Tell us what you think. Yeah, I think that going up against a mobile quarterback is uh, definitely a good, you know, tune-up um, opponent for uh, the non-conference. So I, I like that the dogs are going to have, um, you know, this because you know if you're looking at some of the other Mountain West um, competition in Week One, the Wyoming quarterback is very mobile. Put the team on his back and carry them to a victory over Texas Tech. So. Um, Fresno State's definitely going to go up against some mobile quarterbacks this season. So to be able to get some reps early against you know, an FCS team, you know, with that scheme, I think is going to be good. And at least knowing what we know about uh, Coach Pat McCann and you know he him speaking very highly of you know the Eastern Washington coaching staff and you know they've you know have been historically a really competitive program at the FCS level and then you know their conference, I believe, in, in the Big Sky. And so their, their offense is very capable. So um, definitely not a game that uh, the dogs can overlook. Uh, I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of respect, um, you know, mutually there between, um, you know, each team's coaching staff. So should be a good matchup. Uh, definitely one that, you know, Fresno State should handle easily. Um, I know some of the stats, you know, since 2000, I was reading, uh, Fresno State has played uh, 17 FCS opponents at home and has won every matchup. So, this should be a continuance of that and another home victory uh, against an FCS opponent. Yeah. Especially coming off, off that big win and the coaching staff that we have, I have belief in our coaching staff. They're going to have these kids ready to go. There will be no letdown. I'm going to try something really quick, Caleb, for all the YouTube people. I'm just kicking Caleb in and out again. Uh, by the way, video is also on Spotify. So the only people that don't get video are the iTunes people. Hmm. <laughs> I, it's that's that's on iTunes. Okay, <laughs> back to the game. We so what we know is that they are going to throw the ball, and they're going to throw the ball first. They're not looking to establish the run game. They're looking to throw the ball. And defensively, based off of the one game, we should be able to run the ball on them. We should we should be able to. Uh, but we know North Dakota State, that's their bread and butter. They do that well against anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. But after what we did to Purdue, I feel pretty good about it. Hand the ball to Gilliam, smash mouth football. Let's run for 300 yards. I'm in. Yeah. Well, and, and that's that's an interesting question, too, because you know, looking at the two deep that the coaching staff put out for this week, it, you know, I didn't notice any you know major changes from last week. So um, Lee Sherrod is listed as the starter and Devin Rivers is listed as the backup. So, you know, I guess we're assuming that Gilliam is still going to be the you know third guy coming in um, off the bench there. But, you know, where, where do you think he um shows up in this game like do you think gilliam's actually going to get the bulk of the carries or do you think sherrod should have more um more success you know this game considering you know eastern washington defense is uh likely to give up you know a, a big rushing game one 
I'll get I'll tell you my answer. I do want to address what we did not address on the recap is Malik Sharad tweaked his ankle. Oh. Uh, well, I saw that. And what, I didn't know that on the recap. And I, I saw it today. So he tweaked his ankle. And then I believe somebody hurt their shoulder. Uh, and Damian Moore, that might have been Devin, might have been Damian Moore. I'm not sure. But I know da- Damian Moore is also banged up. So mm-hmm. both of those guys have small injuries, nothing too serious. But that's why we didn't see too much of them. So my guess would be we don't see a whole lot of Malik Sherrod. I would rest him on this, especially if we're up. Let's, and especially at the running back position. I don't want to give him a big load. Gilliam is great. Uh, Devin Rivers looked good. If we have to bring in somebody else, like a uh, Brandon Ramirez or um, the other Draw the fresh- Arsno or yeah, uh, Greer. I think we have plenty of options where we don't have to put Sherrod and Moore in a position to re-injure themselves. So I think Gilliam gets the bulk of the carries. That That's my thought process there. Yeah. That, that makes a ton of sense, and, you know, I, I would enjoy seeing, too, uh, you know, a full game of Elijah Gilliam um, just pounding the rock downhill. Yes. Okay. Should Is there anything – okay, well, should we move on to going to make you sweat everybody dance? Or is there anything else that you want to share or thoughts about this game when it comes to play style, players – we didn't really have any injuries other than a little, the guys we mentioned, and then a little scare with Keen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, Keen looks to be fine. What do yeah, you? Yeah, ex- in yeah, in, in, uh, in the, the coach's press conference today, um, you know, Coach Tedford did provide a little clarity on Keen's injury. I guess he landed on his hip, so he bruised his hip, but um, shouldn't be an issue going forward. So, yeah, thankfully, uh, definitely minor. What do you think about the quarterback position in this game? Do you think if we're up by a lot, I would assume backups come in. Are you interested in watching those backups or are you just thinking, let's just get out of this clean, healthy uh, when the backups are in? I, I mean, I'm very interested to see Logan Five perform and get some snaps in. And I'm also interested to see. And I should have not jumped the gun. I know, guys. I know. Want to know. But I, if we're up, I'm interested to see what the O-line looks like. You know, second, third string. How they right. put it together. Yeah, I think this definitely could be a game where, you know, hopefully in the early second half, we're, we're getting um, some second and third teamers in there to, to get some reps. And, you know, hopefully Mikey lights it up, Logan lights it up, and maybe they even give uh, Mandel uh, an opportunity to get in there because you know, I expect their coaching staff's probably going to want to save him for you know, only four games this year to hopefully um, get a red shirt out of him. But um, you know, if the game is you know well within you know uh, security for Fresno State, I, I would love to see uh, Mandel out there too. But yeah, overall, if we can get the second and third teamers in there, get them some reps and. Um, just kind of build some confidence going forward. I think that's, you know, another reason why, you know, these type of games are are on the schedule. Yep. I totally agree. Okay. Let's talk about Flora Flower Company. Flora Flower Co. is one of our sponsors this year. And men out there, if you want to buy your woman a flower, go or a, or a bouquet, I should say. Go to Flora. It's a local flower shop, modern, unique, located on Shepherd and Willow. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6. They support local growers. They also not only have flowers, but they are your one-stop shop for gifts. They have lots of things. Uh, If your lady needs a planner or is a planner, they have planners there. They have candles. They They have almost everything that a female would enjoy there. So it's your one-stop shop for gifts and flowers. You can order flowers online as well for pickup, or you can come in in person and order it. They have a florist there, so they will help you make it. It's a huge help. They also have subscriptions 
for the lady who has everything. That comes with free delivery. And if you order online, use code FRESNO15 for 15% off, and that lets them know that we sent you. That's Fresno15 for 15% off at Flora Flower Co. All right, Caleb. We're moving in to... As an expert on sweat and sweating, I may as well be a sweat sign. <laughs> what is going to make you sweat? If that's new to anyone, it's Caleb Caleb, CNC. We are the CNC Football Factory. So, Caleb, what is going to make you sweat this Saturday in former Bulldog Stadium when it comes to Eastern Washington? Or maybe it's just us shooting ourselves in the foot. What is going to make you sweat? Yeah, I think that you know, projecting how this game is going to run. I think that one of the things that would keep Eastern Washington in the game is Fresno state turnovers. So, um, Mikey Keene and the offense did an excellent job week one against Purdue of, you know, only one turnover and, you know, it was a really good play by the defense at that. So, uh, but if, you know, there's an early fumble or an early interception that you know maybe it's returned, and you know, Eastern Washington gets beneficial field position. I think that that's something that could keep them around early. Um, I don't really think that that's going to be um, maybe a full game issue, but if, you know, to cause some uh, some sweating early in the game, you know, early, early turnovers, you know, by the Fresno State offense could could definitely cause that. I agree. Never good for turnovers. I'm going to take. Big plays from Eastern Washington. I don't believe that Eastern Washington can hang around just getting by just picking off our defense. I don't believe that they're good enough. I I should give them some credit. They do have good players and their offense is good. However, they're going to have to put together big chunk plays to stay in this game. And if we're giving them up, I'm going to sweat. And that's including... Uh, when it comes to special teams. Mm -hmm. So we need to lock it down on special teams. Don't don't let them get good field position. Definitely don't let them take one back all the way, whether that's punt or kickoff. And then limit the big chunk plays. And when I say big chunk plays, plays under 20 yards. If they are continuously getting big chunk plays, we're going to have one heck of a time on keeping up with them because this, this offense has the potential actually both offenses have the potential to score a lot of points oh sh heck we scored 39 points on purdue we can do it i'm yeah, i just I don't really want have to have that. another game where it's 35 39 let's limit big chunk plays show improvement on special teams and put them away early and having no turnovers will be a huge help Moving on to our everybody dance now. And speaking of dancing, one thing that helps a lot of people dance is wine. Oh, sometimes when you drink too much. Gilles Winery, sponsor of Beware of Bulldogs, local winery located on Biola Avenue, just north of Shaw. So take Shaw if you're out in Fresno and go west. You're going to make a right on Biola. It'll be on your right. Open Saturdays and Sundays, noon to five, weekdays by appointment only. Local wine, the grapes are local. Everything's done there. There is a brick oven pizza. And when I say brick oven, it's not gas brick oven. This is legitimate almond. It's almond wood, brick oven pizza, homemade recipe. And head to Givali. That is of Shaw. All right. Everybody dance now. Everybody dance now, Caleb. What on Saturday is going to make you dance? All right. So I think this is going to be a defense statement game. Uh, I think that the defense probably wasn't um, super thrilled about the like total performance uh, week one against Purdue. Obviously, dogs win, which is great. And but there's a lot that they could build upon, a lot of missed tackles. So all that to say, I think that this is going to be a, a defense statement game. So I, I'm going to be dancing when Fresno State keeps Eastern Washington uh, to single digit points. So I, I definitely think this uh, defense is motivated. Um, 
especially coming off of week one. I think that, you know, if week one was a little bit uh, more comfortable of a victory, um, you know, maybe not as much, um, I want to say, you know, motivation to, to really prove a point here. So I think uh, mm-hmm. defense holding Eastern Washington to single digits um, will make me dance. I like that. I'd be very happy with that. You know mine, Caleb. I'll add one more as well. Okay. <laughs> but if we take a kickoff return back, I will be dancing. I will say it every preview. It's been since 2008, AJ Jefferson. Uh, it's, time. it's time. I would like to see this happen in my lifetime, especially when we're doing Beware of Bulldogs. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Definitely. So if, if that happens this season, do you think it's more likely to be Eric Brooks or Jalen Gill? Oh man. Well, after week one or game one, I would, I would say Eric Brooks, but I'm going to say Jalen Gill. Okay. I'm say Jalen Gill. Um, no, I take it back. The, the football gods will reward Eric Brooks after his 100 yard game. He's going to get one. And they will reward him. It's going to be Eric Brooks. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Well, hopefully, we see it. This would be a great game to do it. <laughs> the, my my other one. I, I'll I will take no turnovers by the offense, and let's force three. Okay. So three whether that's interceptions or fumbles, I'll take three by the defense and then a clean game from the offense and special teams. And I, I think that's super doable too, especially on the interception side, because we saw Lavelle Bailey tip a couple of, you know, really crucial passes uh, against Purdue. And so, you know, when those balls are, you know, tipped or batted up, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, having someone in the, in the right area to, to pick it off. So, you know, I think that the two that I'm thinking of against Purdue, you know, they just fell to the ground because there wasn't anyone else in the area, but different game situation. It's definitely possible. Someone's underneath that. And you know, also, um, you know, the cornerbacks, I think are probably going to be a little bit uh, tougher than maybe Eastern Washington's usually um, used to facing. So I think mm-hmm. Lockridge and Johnson definitely should be, um, you know, having potential targets uh, this week to, to take some balls away. Uh, they're going to be ready. They're, I guarantee you our defense is not too thrilled to not force a turnover. They had the opportunities, but they didn't take them. So they are ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is next on the docket? Actually, Caleb, tell me about Manage X before we get to our keys to the game. Tell me about Manage X. Sure. Uh, it's a local property management company. Uh, they serve as single family homes, apartment complexes, office and industrial properties. So if you're a property owner here in Fresno or Clovis and you need help, give them a call or uh, go to their website, managex.net. And they're big supporters of the Valley and uh, Fresno State Athletics and Beware Bulldogs. So definitely check them out. Great people over there at ManageX. All right, keys to the game. A lot of this coincides with our everybody dance now segment but Caleb if there's anything that you would like to add to your everybody dance now I shouldn't say it that way you want to throw it into the keys to the game you can transfer over from everybody dance now throw it in there but what are your keys to the game yeah I think dominate the run game and you know dominate the lines of scrimmage so you know O-line and D-line I think that you know, obviously you shared the stats from Eastern Washington's game last week against uh, North Dakota State, where uh, they they got beat pretty badly on the defensive side of the ball against you know defending the run. So I think Fresno State needs to establish that early and um, really kind of help with confidence wise for uh, the Fresno State offensive line and just show that you know they they can get a good push, they can open up the running lanes for for this Fresno State uh, offense. So I think establishing the run, controlling lines of scrimmage, definitely something to build confidence on for for this week two matchup i agree i'm my first thought was i want quarterback pressures that's what i want north dakota state only had two sacks but they had a ton of tfls Mm -hmm. i would like to see i would love to see two sacks we didn't get to see a sack last week so two sacks would be great but i think 
we need to create as many quarterback pressures as we can. Do not let him feel comfortable in there. And then, just as you said, running the ball, establish the run. Show them that, you know, let's show our dominance. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, and that starts at the line of scrimmage. I don't want our team to feel as though they have to um, – how do I put this? Go 100 yards in one play. Mm -hmm. Because once you start doing that, then things start creeping in. A team will stick around and feel hope. Get the first down. Let's slowly put this team away and just dominate them. With the clock change, by the way, have you noticed football games go way faster? I actually love this rule change with the clock. I know some people are against it. I absolutely love it. But we use that to our advantage. Run the ball, milk the clock, establish dominance, just pound it. I would love to see that. I know we talked about that last year, too. And with Mims last year, with Gilliam this year, it's very possible the other thing that comes with pounding the rock and uh, showing teams that you are the dominant team at the line of scrimmage, that is a confident booster for your team and completely demoralizing to the other. That would be a big confidence booster heading into our game against Arizona State in Arizona. I would love that for our boys. I think it's very doable. Um, I, I expect that from McCann and our offensive line coach, I think there's a conversation going on right now saying we're going to establish the run and dominate. So my key to the game is very much the same as yours. Uh, let's completely demoralize Eastern Washington at the line of scrimmage. Definitely. That is the key to victory. <laughs> <laughs> you could almost say that every preview. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, some things before we get into our predictions and then get into weather and TV and things like that, Gil, I want to talk about the relationship between Eastern Washington and Fresno State. So Pat McCann was the wide receivers coach at Eastern Washington, came over a couple of years ago, is now the OC for us. Coach Pryor, our running backs coach, was with McCann at Eastern Washington. He's now here. Some There's two players on Eastern Washington Demarcus Johnson might sound familiar to you guys. He's a D end. He transferred uh, to Eastern Washington. I believe he's a super senior now. Mm -hmm. did, he got a, did he play a couple snaps last year? He played. He yeah, played I know he was. I know. Yeah, he know, he I played. Know. I know he 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 battled some injuries last year, um, and you know what wasn't probably as uh, as able to contribute as he would hope, and so yeah, he ended up in the portal and. Land of the Eastern Washington. So, yeah, ho hopefully he's healthy now. But um, I, I'm sure that Fresno State off of offensive line should, should be able to, to handle him. Yeah. Well, there's going to be some old rivalries going on. I'm sure some smack talking as well. They also have a redshirt sophomore wide receiver. I don't know the name, but he went to Clovis West. So they do have a Clovis West product at, in the wide receiver room there. So there is some – oh, by the – also – their athletic director is Tim Collins, who was, I don't know if I'm getting, going to get his title right, is it associate athletic director? That he's sounds like, he's right. like number yeah. two. Yeah. Number two here, and then he took the AD job at Eastern Washington. So yep. we just like, we're just trading people back and forth, Eastern Washington and Fresno State. It's that red, I guess. Uh, and if you didn't know this, the fact about Eastern Washington, they have a red field, red turf. Uh, never. Never in my life do I hope Fresno State puts red turf in, ever. Yeah, well, that and it, in in no way or reason should Fresno State ever schedule an away game to Eastern Washington. <laughs> that would be just dreadful to watch. Uh, I'm good with the checkered end zones. We exactly. must. That's a must have. Okay, let's get into weather and predictions. Bef but before that, Caleb. I want to tell everybody to go check out Tats Pocket Pros custom made Pocket Pro football helmets. If you're on Spotify or YouTube, this is what they do. They make smaller 
model football helmets. We have a Boyer Bulldogs one. It looks very cool. And he also sent us some really cool Fresno State football helmets. This one that I'm showing is the Bulldog script, red, white, and blue. Check out Tats Pocket Pros on Instagram. Tats Pocket Pros, your custom-made Pocket Pro football helmets. All right. Very cool. They are very cool. I really like them. I got, I got them on my shelf. I do owe you a couple of these, though. So, never mind. <laughs> Don't let me keep all of them for myself. <laughs> all right. We're getting into this week's matchup. Um so a little bit different for a home game for the dogs, a 6 p.m. kickoff. Um, obviously, um, you know, we've discussed briefly before that um, you know, this game's not nationally broadcast. So, but that's a good thing though, because a really cool broadcast opportunity in partnership with uh, Unimas and a Spanish language um, broadcast for this game. And there's also going to be an, an English broadcast version on the Mountain West Network. So uh, but that you know not being picked up uh, allowed some flexibility with uh, the school and uni moss to kind of pick what time they wanted to have the game so 6 p.m a little bit earlier kick than uh, than usual so um should be hot but not too hot I think game time temp should be around 90 degrees should be sunny and uh, should be a great evening for uh, some fresno state football so if you're not able to make it to the stadium you do have a couple streaming options and um i know at least the mount west network is is free so you know in anyone has the ability to watch that and then if you're not able to watch it or be there uh, obviously our friends at uh, uh bulldog sports properties and um uh fox sports radio uh, you know they'll, they'll have the call um paul and pat and cam they do a really great job. I don't know if you saw uh, last week on uh, the Purdue game, uh, Cam Morrell on the sideline when uh, Dean Clark had the pass breakup in the end zone and uh, Cam oh, yes. ended up with the ball and was signaling to the refs, you know, incomplete. So <laughs> that's just kind of the fun things that, you know, you can sometimes pick up on and plenty, plenty of passion and, and energy from, from that group. They were so fun. I thought they did a great job against Purdue. Uh, I actually had multiple people tell me that they turned off the Big Ten Network <laughs> and turned on uh, Bulldog Sports Properties or Bulldog Sports Network mm -hmm. uh, because I, they're the best. They are the best. I Look, I saw a tweet from Tim Brando, the former guest of the show, about you know today's media world and talking about biases and things, things like that. Luckily, well, we've been blessed, Caleb. We get to be totally biased on this show. That's basically what our show is about. <laughs> but look, those guys are so good at their job. Uh, you guys know this. I don't need to go into any more of that. I, I'm. It's fun to have them around. Um, there was one more thing. Oh, is there a spread, Caleb, or an over under on this? I know a lot of the times they don't release those because they're not FBS schools. Right. Yeah. I could not find one. So, um, you know, we will have to make up our own this week. Um, and yeah, that's, that's common considering it's FBS versus FCS matchup. So kind of tough to handicap anyways. So, um, yeah, no, no spread to kind of go off of, but, um, uh, we will definitely still be making our pick. And before we move on, um, at the game, uh, we'll also be the first enshrinement of a uh, coach into uh, the new Fresno State uh, Ring of Honor, I believe they're calling it. So uh, Coach Jim Sweeney will be honored at halftime. Um, and uh, so that should be a really cool um, celebration of you know, one of the pioneers of Fresno State football. So definitely another reason to be there and to stay in your seat at halftime. And um, should be a good time and kind of see how they're you know, going to set up this Ring of Honor or honor them because obviously it's first season that they're doing this, moving away from uh, retired jerseys. So should be a should be Pretty cool, um, you know, halftime, uh, you know, portion of the game. A couple of things I should mention before I forget. Lavelle Bailey was named Mountain West Player of the Week, and Mikey Keene was named Mountain West Offensive Player of the Week. Just throwing that in there. This is the first time we will be playing Eastern Washington, I believe, in the history yep. of Fresno State. And this is weird stack. Yeah, but I did not realize this. If we win Saturday... We will be 2-0 and for the first time since 2013. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess it helps to win our first Power 5 matchup. That, that'll, that, that'll get us <laughs> yes. on, on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Also, it is wear white night. Not sure if we mentioned that, but is make sure you wear white. I know it's tempting to wear red, but for this occasion, wear white. And we will be honoring our heroes. So it's heroes night. We'll be honoring some veterans at the game as well. Uh, okay, Caleb. Prediction time. We're going to have to make up the the spread here. We don't have to. What is your final prediction for Saturday in former Bulldog Stadium? So I think this is a uh, comfortable Bulldog victory uh, score of 45 to 14. So dogs are going to win by about 31 points is my prediction. Um, so I, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep uh, the Eastern Washington Eagles to single digits like you know I'm hoping for with my everybody dance now. So I, I do think they're going to be able to squeeze two touchdowns um, out here, maybe one in garbage time, but should be a comfortable victory for the dogs, 45-14. Okay, that's close to mine. I'm going 41-10. Okay. We got 45-14 and a 41-10. Should be comfortable. My touchdown is coming in garbage time. I, 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 I'm. This is totally based off North Dakota State. They put up ten against North Dakota State. North Dakota State's a good team, but mm-hmm. I feel like they can beat with those guys. So, uh, I'll take the forty-one ten Bulldogs. Let us know what your predictions are down below, and hit the follow subscribe the notification bell because we will be going live on sunday at 7 p.m to recap this game i know the nfl is starting and there's going to be sunday night football but it's we're talking dogs last recap you guys went crazy in the chat on youtube and twitter we couldn't keep up and you guys had your own conversations going on it was great we don't have to take care of you guys anymore yes (laughs) uh so thank you guys one for all your support. You guys hit, we hit over a thousand followers on Twitter. We're over a hundred uh, subscribers on YouTube and shoot. You guys got us to like 800 views against Purdue, the Purdue get to know and things like that. The recap hit 500 in 24 hours. You guys are absolutely insane. The red wave is unbelievable. And that's, that's why we do this. We love you guys. And we love the players. Thank you, players, for doing such a great job. It's it's week two. The dogs, I have a feeling we're going to know. I, just, I have that feeling. But we can't overlook them. We cannot overlook them. Caleb, any closing words for uh, us Red Waivers? Well, I'm just looking forward to seeing everybody at former Bulldog Stadium. Uh, obviously, first home game is exciting. Weather should be great. Um, no reason to not be out there. So uh, get there early um, and get into the stadium so that way you know the place is rocking you know, at kickoff. Um, so, yeah, just looking forward to it, and go dogs! If you're in the quarterback club, we will be at the tailgate uh, doing a podcast. If you're not in the quarterback club make, and you want to be a part of it, go check it out. And we, if you're there, we'll see you hop on. We're going to have a third mic there open to whoever wants to come talk to us. We can talk Fresno State football or basketball or baseball, whatever you guys want to talk about. Water polo. We're, we love Fresno State sports. Um, it's going to be a huge party Saturday. Can't wait to see you guys there. Wear white. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless. And as always, go dogs. Go dogs.